So this is our last trip with Matthew in Dora, the Explorer. Let me quickly open for you here. Because after today, we are buying our new Hyundai bus. Happy. And we're off. Mommy, yeah. are you going to enjoy not being so scrunched up? Oh, okay. We'll have to get that. <laughs> Ta da! Found the seatbelt. Daddy was sleeping. <laughs> I caught you. The little prince is fast asleep. Say bye. Boy. We are here by the museum at the Blader Dam. Find me in the river. We were here almost three years ago when we were trading our double cab in and we decided to take one last trip with Matthew in our double cab, Dora, to, uh, to show him this beautiful area. Find me on my knees. It's very difficult for me to travel without Matthew. Um, for me, it has it, it's more difficult to live without my boy than it ever was having to fight for his life. And um, honestly, my faith has never been this tested before. Walked against the water. There were many things in Matthew's praise party that um, we felt led to do and we weren't quite sure why. Um, we feel that there was a lot of symbolism. Part of our journey is to find out um, the meaning behind those. I'm waiting if you please. Now we'll be going down to one of the many waterfalls in this area to see what uh, God wants to show us and what he wants us to share. We long to see the roses But never felt the thorns That's a quilling tree And bought our pretty crowns But never paid the price Find me in the river, find me there Find me on my knees with my soul made bare Even though you're gone and I'm cracked and dry Find me in the river I'm waiting here In a matter of moments, we went from being parents to not being parents. Our purpose for which we had lovingly and willingly journeyed to lay down our everything was snatched away in an instant. 
We were part of a special needs community fighting for our child's life. A lonely path, but together with many other parents doing the same, as part of a formidable army to teach people how to accept our differently able children. And in a few seconds, we were thrust into a secret no-name society of bereaved parents, where everyone fights in silence, alone, in pain unseen and unknown, for every breath to live without our children. Having a medically complex special needs child who faced death so often and so bravely, one would expect to be prepared for the imminent transition. But hearing that daily call to cross the big divide in no way prepared us for that moment or the long painful road that would follow. Having seen many parents cross that bridge before us was heart-wrenching. We always wondered what happened to them and why they seemed to just disappear. We tried in our own way to reach out as often and as best we could. We wanted so much for them to still be a part of the world they once knew and that we then were still part of. We didn't and couldn't know about the reality they faced, the immense crushing load of loss they were forced to live with or the different fight they were fighting. Now, having walked that terrifying bridge ourselves, we understand better that chasm that divides so hugely and horribly, so tragically and untimely, so devastatingly and destructively. Neither side of that bridge is easy. From this side of the bridge, since our Matthew went home, Psalm 42 and 43 have become devoted crutches for us to lean on, to use as weapons, and as a stark reminder of this divine burden we bear. We didn't count on suffering We didn't count on pain But if the blessing's in the valley In the river I will wait. A waterfall, defined as a cascade of water falling from a height, formed when a river or stream flows over a precipice or steep incline. We are experiencing a different kind of waterfall, a torrent of darkness plummeting from an utmost intensity over an unexpected unknown into an abyss of nothingness. We are tossed and churned by that avalanche of waters, the weight unbearable, the escape impossible, the end a distant longing, and completely broken beyond comprehension. Psalm 42 verse 7 Deep calls unto deep at the noise of your waterfalls. All your waves and billows have gone over me. Billow cloths have been used for a long time as a prophetic action of a wave offering to God. We felt led to use billow cloths as part of Matthew's praise party, but we felt in no position to wave any offering to God. We had nothing to offer Him except our grief, our anguish, our pain, our loss, our emptiness, our purposelessness, our regrets, our guilt, our anger, our shame our doubt and unbelief. And if it was not enough that we had nothing to offer, we felt unable to even lift our hands, let alone wave. As special needs parents, our hands were constantly busy fighting in different ways for our son's life. At times, our hands even felt cut off as options ran out. But now, with our purpose gone, our hands lay lifeless, on a dry, deserted battlefield, blood-stained by the gaping, gushing hole in our hearts left behind by the loss of our only child. Psalm 42, verse 11. Why are you downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise Him, my Saviour and my God. We had to choose to lift our hands holding the billow cloth as best we could, 
in a feeble attempt at our way of offering to God. And it continues to be a daily choice, sometimes an hourly one, even by the minute. Psalm 42 verse 3, My tears have been my food day and night, while they continually say to me, Where is your God? The deafening silence in our home is a continuous crescendo to the noise of that waterfall, our all-encompassing pain. The waves and billows of grief and regret are powerful, debilitating, engulfing and relentless. From that utter depth of hopelessness we groan and we can only call to the one who from his very depth sees all even though we cannot see him amidst the waves and billows that engulf us, who hears all, even though we cannot hear him with the noise of the waterfalls roaring in our ears, who knows all, even though nothing makes sense and our questions remain unanswered. A few evenings before we tackled this trip, we were having a particularly difficult time fighting our silent fight. A friend of ours had hung a sun catcher for Matthew on an olive tree in her garden. And that evening, as the wind blew, the garden light caught the sun catcher in just the right way, making it appear like a heartbeat in the dark of the night. Not hearing Matthew's heartbeat over the stethoscope that evening when he went home is something that will haunt me for the rest of my life. But God sent a little heartbeat through a friend's small gesture. While standing at the plunge pool, gazing at the waterfall, the turnaround point of our one kilometre hike, something caught our eye. It was the beautiful reflection of the sun by the water that rippled out in waves from the waterfall. The reflection shone against the trees and rocks that bordered the plunge pool, and it was moving, changing, running, dancing as the water echoed the falls, the very falls that crushed us, the very waves that overwhelmed us, the very dark depths of our brokenness were at the root of this breathtaking beauty. It was like a huge God-created sun catcher. Psalm 43 verse 3, send forth your light and your truth, let them guide me. Let them bring me to your holy mountain, to the place where you dwell. While Matthew was here with us, he taught us that no matter what happens, God is still God, and we can still praise him. And because of Matthew, here we are still learning. Praise reflected by the rippling waters of the waves from a waterfall of immense brokenness looks very different if not more beautiful, than praise in the direct sunshine when things are going good. We all experience waterfalls at some or other point in our lives, and to varying degrees. When we are that broken, there is less of us in the way. So God's light, His truth, can shine through the shards of our once intact frame of reference that we clung so tightly to. And the essence of brokenness that flows from our deep, dark, difficult times, when all we can do is draw nearer to God, is something so precious. It exudes a reflective fragrance which we can share with those who care enough to hedge around us, who dare step closer to be still with us. If we will be real and allow them just a little nearer to witness our throbbing rawness. We will never know what kind of waterfall someone has been through as they flow past us in life, whether as a babbling brook, a rushing river, just a steady stream, or even as a green stagnant puddle unable to move. We cannot do anything to change what happened upstream, and very little to make the downstream much easier. But we can choose to take some time to stop and be still next to someone, whether it is to bask in the warmth of a moment of full sunshine with them, 
or to value the reflection that their deep waters may offer. I'm waiting here.